Hi YouTubers, this is Mary once again. Just thought I'd come by and show you guys this book. You know, I'm always talking about a book, which I have a lot of them, but one of my favorite authors is Dan Millman. You know, he wrote The Peaceful Warrior and The Life You Were Born to Live. He's written several books, but I do have three of his books. And this one is um, The Everyday Enlightenment by Dan Millman. This book, I bought this book in 2005. And this, this book really stirred me up and got me, I would say, ignited my fuel. And I want to show you, this is the way I used to do my books like this. I used to mark them. Let me see if I can thumb through and show you how I used to mark them. There's blue, green, pink, and yellow. And this, that meant for me to really pay attention to what was going on in the book. But this book, it did something to me. And you young people, like anybody, you don't have to be young because uh, 2005, I wasn't that young, and I just got inspired. I think this is the year that I decided to go to New Zealand, and I, I mean, that was a hard decision, but I did it. 12-hour flight. But it, this book inspired me. But if, if there was such thing as a, a shortcut... Or they call it um, fast track. If it's just saying a fast track to enlightenment, this book is the one. Because it has 12 gateways to personal growth. And it's never too late to get started again or to get out of a rut. Because as long as you live, you can restart your engine and do it over and change your mind about things and nowadays we do need to be inspired every day but you know how I have to read a little bit because I'm just going to read <laughs> a little bit it said if uh, 12 gateways to spiritual growth let me see if I can put it in front of me if we never suffered pain or loss, if death did not await us, we might never need to seek a higher understanding. We might never wonder about the soul, the hereafter, or the ultimate meaning of life. But life is brief, a flash of lightning, a snap of eternity's fingers. So we question and wonder. While striving for a successful place in the material world, our paths eventually lead us to the arena of spiritual growth and discovery. We sometimes seek spirit in churches, temples, or several tents, or revival tents, but we don't always encounter it there. Some of us look for spirit in a bottle or a pill, leading either to an early death or unconscious life. Others seek inspiration in sports or sexual sexual excuse me sexual relationship. Yet all the time, spirit has been waiting for us, calling to us, right here, right now, in everyday life. So, it's there. And when you think about it, it's, it's, have you ever been looking for something and you know where you put it in a mist all the clutter, you can't find it and you almost have to take a, a back away from it. And uh, people say, if it had been a snake, it would have bit me. And that's how enlightenment is. It's right there. And it's the snake that's in your face. And, and you can't even see it because it's so close. But this 
this book, I'm so glad I decided to pull it out and share it with you guys. Uh, I don't know. And, and the way, the world we live in now, you know, people are always saying we're living in the end times and the end of the world and all of that. But uh, the second coming of Christ and the end of the world is possibly when your life ends. And then the second coming of, of Christ may be your enlightenment and your awakening. That may be the second coming. But uh, take the time to breathe and be aware of your breathing. And be aware of yourself in this world. And realize that things are, things are really uh, about to change. And we can make it through whatever. Because I've been through some things in my life. And I, when I look back on it, it's like, wow, I made it. But when you're in the throes of it. You don't even, you can't picture how you're going to get through it. But in order to go through it, you have actually got to go through it. It's kind of like um, a storm. If you are driving in a storm, you can pull over under a bridge and wait the storm out, or you can just persevere and go through the storm either way you still gotta go through it and if you're afraid to drive in the rain you probably should just sit there and be still but even even when I decide to drive through the storm it's like man if I'd have stayed under that bridge I just, that, that storm was a pretty long storm. So I'm glad I just kept on driving, kept on driving. And then you look down the road and, and the ground is not even wet where you're going. I said, man, okay, you just got to go through it. So that's the way life is. But to have the encouragement to go through. And if I had did what I, the things that I thought I was going to do, if I had just kept going and kept, didn't change my mind and do some way with it as wishy-washy and doing something different. Because whatever situation or whatever path you decide to take, it's still going to be storms on that path. So a lot of times you don't even have to switch, you know, don't. Don't be uh, hard on yourself and when you change, when you do change your mind. But it's, it's a good thing to stick one path all the way out until it's over and then do something else. And that's, that's and even in his book, uh, The Life You Were Born to Live, that numer numerology book, uh, my, my birth numbers tell me that I'm dealing with impatience and perfection i expect too much out of people but oh if i had to do it all over again i would basically do the same thing but i would have read more and the things that i read about i would have implied them to my life and it's i think it's more about your peace of mind and your spiritual enlightenment because it's it's not too i mean you could in your life you you know people get fall in love get married have children get a job and i mean some people have religious convictions and some people don't but basically Whatever, you know, the fork in the road, whichever way you go, you are still carrying you, the essence of yourself, your spiritual self, you are you. And whatever road you decide to go, it's going to be you on that road. So 
it's 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 not rocket science to try to figure you out. It's about being convicted of your your path of what you are here to do. And religion, religion is the biggest stumbling block in our path. It's not about God because God is the essence of us. We are God. So religion is the biggest stumbling block. So if we if we could get rid of religion and the gods that we have created, man is created and that's what make the religious wars. My God is better than your God and all of that kind of stuff. And it just depends on what part of the world you were born in, what God you, you worship. So, but all of that is a man-made thing. And I mean, because, you know, if you look in the stars, I mean, look in the sky and you see the stars and you, you you wonder at it and you say oh wow i mean you know you couldn't do it so you have to say that there is a god or something greater than you that did this so we give this god a name but this god i mean we i mean this some of them are I don't know. It's a lot of things that these gods we create. They they want a lot from us, and what do they give us in in return? I mean, I don't want to get off into that that subject, but I'll get back to this book, Mary. Get this book, man. Everyday Enlightenment by Dan Millman. Look him up if you if you want to get some uh, you know some feedback on him. But this is a good book. Anyway, just talking about that book. I'll check with you guys later. Bye.